This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, what is the freeze subdivision level button used for? So to start off, I just have ZBrush loaded up. I have the earthquake model here loaded in. And the question is referring to this freeze subdivision level button over here that's underneath the geometry palette. So what is this button used for inside of ZBrush? So the primary function of this button is to allow you to use processes inside of ZBrush that you normally can't do on a subdivision model. So Earthquake here has six subdivision levels. And let's say I come through and I start sculpting on him in his stomach here. And I find out that I do not have enough topology or resolution in this area to reach the details I want. Well, you could subdivide this model up but I could also drop it down to the lowest subdivision level and then come through and say add some edge loops to increase the topology in those areas. So to add an edge loop, it'd be pretty simple. You just come and select the Z Milder brush and then hover over an edge and click. But as you can see, as I click on a model with subdivisions, you're gonna get this error message. So you're not gonna be able to use the Z Milder brush on this model. So by coming over here and just going back up to the highest subdivision level, and now clicking the Freeze Subdivision Levels button. This is going to give you the same visual effect as having Earthquake on the lowest subdivision level. But now with the model frozen like so, I can now use any of the processes inside a ZBrush that cannot be used on subdivision models. So you can see I can come through and add edge loops. I can remove edge loops. I can modify the topology with the ZModeler brush as I see fit. Now after you've made these changes to the lower version of Earthquake here, you simply just need to come over here and unclick the Freeze Subdivision Levels button, and this is going to reapply the subdivision levels and reproject these sculptural details back to your model. So after that process is finished, you can clear the mask, and you can see now I have those topology changes across my model, and it's got me back to those six subdivision levels and all these sculptural details I had originally on Earthquake before I modified that topology are back. So now I can switch back to that damn standard brush. And now if I come in and carve that surface there, you can see now I'm going to get a cleaner stroke or cut into the surface there because I increased the topology on that lower resolution version of Earthquake. So this freeze subdivision levels button will also work with things like DynaMesh and ZRemesher. So I can come over here and click that button and then go to the DynaMesh tab here. And then I can just re-DynaMesh Earthquake entirely. So totally changing his entire topology. And then unclick that freeze subdivision levels. And this is going to do that same process. So it's going to take the subdivision levels and the sculpting I already have and project it back onto this new mesh that I created with DynaMesh. And so here you can see Earthquake in the DynaMeshed version. So if I scroll back down to level one here, you can see his entire mesh is now in that DynaMesh format. And it has came through and subdivided the model up and then projected all those details back. So a really handy tool for modifying topology on your model and still holding subdivision levels and sculpting that you may have done. So if you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.